I now give the floor to Ms. Ruven Menig Diwella. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to express UNHCR's appreciation for this opportunity to brief Security Council members and other invited participants on critical issues relating to the protection and human rights of refugees and migrants involved in irregular sea movements from North Africa to Europe. As a frontline humanitarian agency, and despite our advocacy, assistance, and other efforts with states to alleviate human suffering, we continue to bear witness to the tragedies of lives lost at sea and on land routes with no end in sight. Please bear with me, Mr. President, while I provide a few numbers which present a sobering picture of this, uh, the dimensions of this problem. Between January and August this year, it is estimated that over 102,000 refugees and migrants attempted to cross the central Mediterranean Sea to Europe from Tunisia alone, a 260% increase compared to last year. And over 45,000 people from Libya. 31,000 people were rescued at sea or intercepted and disembarked in Tunisia, and 10,600 in Libya. Departures from Algeria remained more limited, with almost 4,700 arrivals in Spain until August this year, an increase of 18% compared to last year. Additionally, a total of 3,700 people were rescued or intercepted by the Algerian authorities during the same period, a 68% increase from last year. In total, some 186,000 people arrived from January to 24th September this year by sea in Southern Europe, in Italy, Greece, Spain, Cyprus, and Malta, with the vast majority, over 130,000 people, arriving in Italy, an increase of 83% compared to the same period last year. By September 24th of this year, over 2,500 people were accounted as dead or missing this year alone. This number represents an increase by two thirds compared with the 1,680 people for the same period last year. Lives are also lost on land, away from public attention. The journey from West Africa or the Eastern Horn of Africa to Libya and onward to points of departure on the coast remains one of the world's most dangerous. Refugees and migrants traveling along the land routes from Sub-Saharan Africa risk death and gross human rights violations at every step. Mr. President, the high departure rates from Tunisia result from the perception of insecurity among refugee communities following incidents of racially motivated attacks and hate speech, as well as collective expulsions from Libya and Algeria. This takes place in a broader context of a deterioration in the security situation of several countries neighboring North Africa, triggering more secondary movements with land arrivals and asylum seeker registrations in Tunisia having seen a marked increase this year. In Libya, while UNHCR faces restrictions in registration, nearly 50,000 refugees and asylum seekers are nevertheless registered with our office not being authorized to access some disembarkation points controlled by entities involved in interception and rescue at sea limits UNHCR's ability to assist those disembarked and brought to detention centers. The conditions of thousands of refugees and migrants in both official and unofficial detention facilities in Libya remain of grave concern. UNHCR continues to advocate for the registration of all persons seeking international refugee protection and seeks Libya's support to ensure access to and appropriate responses for them. UNHCR also remains concerned about the disembarkation in Libya of refugees and, asylum and migrants rescued or intercepted at sea. Libya is not a place of safety for the purposes of disembarkation following rescue at sea. While UNHCR recognizes states' sovereign and legal right to engage with other states and take measures, to enhance border management, effective border management is compatible with the respect for human rights. UNHCR is committed to assisting the Tunisian and Libyan authorities, along with IOM and other partners, in addressing the mixed, migration, mixed movements of refugees and migrants arriving at their borders. Mr. President, the situation on Lampedusa is cause for serious concern. 
UNHCR recognizes the difficulties posed by the very large number of people arriving simultaneously on a small island where reception capacities are limited. UNHCR is present on Lampedusa to support the authorities and appreciates their efforts to quickly decongest the island. This is a top priority, to ensure that people get the assistance they need, including the most vulnerable. While applauding the solidarity of the people of Lampedusa, Italy cannot be left on its own in responding to the needs of the arrivals. UNHCR has repeatedly called for the establishment of an agreed regional disembarkation and redistribution mechanism for people who arrive by sea in a spirit of responsibility sharing and solidarity with frontline states. As recently emphasized by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, the challenges of mixed movements of refugees and migrants require a panoramic approach of population movement, to population movements. This implies moving away from the focus on just controlling arrivals at borders to looking at their geographical complexity at all steps of the migratory routes, including addressing root causes in countries of origin, such as conflict and violence interacting with climate change, weak governance, and lack of development. At the core of this approach, there is the recognition of the importance of the right to seek asylum at borders without being turned away or violently pushed back. People should not be prevented from seeking protection under international human rights law and international refugee law. The root-based approach also calls for renewed efforts to establish proper, legal, substantive migration pathways to keep economies and social systems going and to provide proper entry points for migrants as well as complementary pathways for refugees. Mr. President, UNHCR has four urgent recommendations for this gathering. First, human rights safeguards. Any cooperation or assistance provided by other states to the Libyan or Tunisian authorities for border management purposes should ensure that the human rights of refugees and migrants are upheld. Second, increased search and rescue at sea. All Mediterranean states must urgently step up search and rescue efforts and implement effective and predictable disembarkation mechanisms. Saving lives at sea and providing humanitarian assistance is one of the most basic obligations of humanity, and those performing rescue operations or helping in good faith should not be penalized for doing so. Third, the pr prosecution of smugglers and traffickers. All states must renew efforts to cooperate to effectively investigate and prosecute smugglers and traffickers and those enabling these crimes to be committed on such a large scale while protecting the victims of such trafficking. Fourth, resettlement and complementary pathways. UNHCR urges all states to strengthen investments in development and inclusion in countries of asylum and transit, to remove barriers in accessing family reunification, and to expand resettlement quotas for refugees in Libya and those evacuated to the emergency transit mechanisms. Resettlement quotas for refugees in, North, in other North African countries should also be increased, as well as other pathways for refugees and migrants. And finally, Mr. President, from the 13th to the 15th of December this year, UNHCR will be organizing, along with Switzerland, Colombia, France, Japan, Jordan, and Uganda, the second global refugee forum in Geneva. We call on states and other stakeholders to use this opportunity to advance their commitments to addressing the challenges of mixed movements through transformational pledges that can translate these four urgent recommendations into actions to save lives. Thank you. I thank Ms. Manik Diwella for her briefing. I now give the floor to Mr. Par Lilliard. <laughs> 